a new modern looking chart in Excel. This is what we're going to learn in today's video, how to create this customized chart instead of using the standard one. As we can see, both of those charts are a bar chart. However, the one to the right is a Excel standard version and the one to the left is the one that I customized myself. And in this video, we're going to see how to do it step by step. It's basically a bar chart where I can compare informations using a simple data set. And in this chart, I can see, let's say, store A against store B and see all the data that I need. And this chart can help me retrieve important informations and to make analysis in Excel. So step by step from scratch, let's see how can I create this chart instead of using the standard one. Let's go. First of all, before we get started, it's very important to have a data set in Excel to create a chart. So if you want to download this Excel file, you can click in the link in the description down below, 100% free. That way you can use the same data as I'm using here. However, if you want to use a different data, you can do so. Here as the data set, I basically have a simple sample with the description and the star A and the star B. Basically, I'm compare one star against each other. So let's say I'm seeing here as the data, what is the star that sold the most? What is the star that sold the least? What is the star that has the most number of customers served? And what is the one that has the least? And on and on. Uh, let me select everything that I have, and then I can go to insert and use the chart. For this video, I want to use a bar chart. Let me click here and then select the third option of the bar chart. But why should I use the third option and not the first one? Because as you, we can see, if I choose the first one, the chart is not properly set. Because let's say a percentage is much smaller than a currency value. That is a large number. So this is why we can't see properly all the bars. However, if I go to the last option, here I can see each one of the bars individually set in the chart. Or in other words, each one of the bars are with their own value, with their own proportions. So let's select the last option. Okay, that's it. Uh, let me click in the corners. As we can see, there's this little circle. I can click, hold and drag to change the size of the chart. Let me click in the chart, hold and drag up. The first thing that I want to start with is read off the informations that I don't want to use, such as the informations in the left, the, the legend, or the name of each one of the bars, the category, the grid lines in the background, and also the values uh, underneath. And take the legend that is underneath the, the bar chart and bring it up like this, and on and on. Uh, but before I read it off the information, something that we need to be mindful is if you take a look in my data set, profit margin is the last information that I have and the monthly sales is the first one. However, in the chart, as we can see, it's upside down. The monthly sales, instead of be the first one, is the last one. And the profit margin, instead of be the last one, is the first one. So I need to invert this order. But how can I do it? I can right click in these options and go to format axis. That way to the right, I'm going to have a panel and I can select this option right here. Axis options, axis options, and then categories in reverse order. Okay, now I can close this panel and yeah, that's it. Now I have the same order in the categories as I have in my list. Now I can select everything and then read it off this information. Select the, uh, the percentage above, delete, select the grid line and also read it off this information. Now it's time to take the legend that I have underneath the chart and move above. So I just need to click in the legend, hold and drag up. However, when I do it, as we can see, there's still a blank space underneath the chart. But why is that? Because when we take the legend and move up, the space that was supposed to contain the legend is gonna remain blank. And to fix this problem, I can right click in the legend and go to format legend and select this option or unmark it, this option. Show the legend without overlapping the chart. Close the panel and yeah, that's it. Now the chart is much more similar to the one that I have right here. Now the next steps maybe can be changing the colors of the chart. We can start with the background and then move on to the bar, the blue bar, and then to the orange one. Let's click in the background of the chart, right click, format chart area, and I want to use fill. As the fill, I want to select solid fill. And then as the colors, I can maybe choose a black one, or maybe I can choose a yellow one, or on and on. But as we can see, the color that I'm using in the background of the chart that I already did is very different than the colors that Excel gives me. So how can I choose a different color? I can go to more colors and then customize it my own. And as the background color, I want to use a light yellowish color. And this color, you can cope the same code that I'm going to input here. So as the red, I want to use 245. As the green, I want to use 245 again. And as the blue, 239. And okay. 
That's it. Now we have the same color in the background. Let's move on to the blue bar and go to solid fill. And this time I want to use a blue color. However, I don't want to use any of those standard colors that Excel gives me. I want to customize my own color. So again, we go to these options and as the settings, you can cope with the same thing that I'm going to do here. As the red, 100. As the green, 200. And as the blue, 255. Okay. And the last bar, I want to use solid fill again. And as the color, more colors. This time I want to use a light reddish color. As the red, 255. As the green, 120. And as the blue, 130. Okay. And before we close this panel again, let's click here in the border and select a black color. Okay. Let's click in the and do the same thing. Black color. And now let's click in the background of the chart and also use a black color as the border. Yeah, that's it. Now I can close this panel. Ah, much better. Our chart is looking out. And there's two more main informations that we are missing here. The first one, the headers of each one of the bars and also the values. Because even though we can see the bar and see the proportions from the red to the blue, we can't see the values. So I can't know how much is the blue and how much is the red. As we can see in this chart that is already done, the values is very, very important to use. And also the headers, the legend, the titles. So let me click in the chart and then I can go to chart design. Let's add the values. Go to add chart element and I'm going to have here data labels. I can select inside base. That way I have already the values for both bars, the blue one and the red one. The position of the blue one is already right. The position of the red needs to change. I need to take the position of this number and move to the right. Let me right click on those numbers, format data labels and to the right I can select inside and as the label position. I can close this panel. Now let's select the numbers to the left and click in the home tab, put everything in bold and change the font color to a white one. I'm going to do the same thing for the numbers to the right. Home tab, put everything in white and everything in bold. Now it's time to add the titles for each one of the bars. And here is where we need to know a trick in Excel. Instead of using the standard headers that Excel gives us, we can create our own. And to do it, I want to use insert tab and to the right, I'm going to have text box. Or you can also choose shapes and then you can use a rectangle, let's say, or even a square, it doesn't matter. But I want to stick with a rectangle. Let's place the rectangle right here. And even though you place it wrongly, maybe here, okay, it's wrong because the title needs to be directly above the bar or the bar needs to be underneath the title. Even though you, you place the, the rectangle here, you can still click in the rectangles and with the arrow keys, you can move it down and also move it to the left like this, like I'm doing here. That way we can have much more preciseness. If you double click slowly in the rectangle, you can type in anything that you like. However, I will not manually type all the titles that I have here, all the descriptions, because it's going to take a long time. So I want to automate this. And of course, whenever this title or the description changes, the description within the rectangle is also automatically updated for me. How can I do it? Let's select the rectangle, all the rectangle. Okay, it's not just click inside the rectangle, but select everything. And then you can go to the formula bar, click, and then equal sign, select the first description that you have. If you press enter, as we can see, now the description that you have in the list is also the same description that we have within the rectangle. And if I change the description, so let's say Joe by Excel, I'm going to press enter and looks what's going to happen with the description within the rectangle. Enter. Okay, so the description also changed to us. Because this is how we can use an automation in Excel throughout the, the shapes. Now, it's very important to duplicate this description, this title, to all the bars that we have. So select the rectangle and then Ctrl C, Ctrl V to cope and paste. One more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. Okay, I think it's enough. Let's roughly place all these titles above the, the bars. Okay, I done. However, I think it's important to make a better distribution between those rectangles. So what I can do is... I can select the first one and then I can press and hold the control key, press and hold down, select the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one. Now you can go to shape format to the right, ally, and then you can select ally to the left. And again, ally, distribute vertically. And with everything selected, with the arrow keys, I can move everything to the right, maybe right here. Okay, I think it's enough. Another thing is I have different descriptions. So I also need to have different descriptions to the titles, to the headers. How can I do it? I can select the second one, let's say, and instead of using the cell A2 or the cell A in the row two, I can change the row to the row three, the third one, enter. Now the second one is gonna be number four. The next one is gonna be five. The next one is gonna be six. The next one is gonna be seven, enter, okay. Let's select the first one and change the design and that way we can automatically apply 
all the same design that we have in the first one to all the others. Format, and then let's read it off the outline and also read it off the shape because the way we can make it transparent. I also want to make the font a little bit smaller, maybe 10, put everything in bold, and also align to the bottom. Now, instead of manually change the design to all the other rectangles that we have, I can double click in the Format Painter, one, two, and then I can click over all the rectangles that I have. And to make this chart even more complete, we can add these thin rectangles to the top right corner and also to the bottom left corner. So again, I can use insert, shapes, and use a rectangle. Let's place one here in the top right corner. This one is going to be blue. However, I want to change the blue gradient. Let me read it off the outline. And as the shape fill, I want to use the same blue as we used it before. Or actually, we can add a outline, but a thinner one. So shape format, shape outline black, shape outline again. And as the weight, I can use three quarters. Okay, much better. Let's click in this rectangle, Control C, Control V to copy and paste. Let's move it down like this and change the color to a red one, the same red as we used it before. Okay, let's go to the title, the main one, and change it to store A versus store B. And that's it, we're done. So this is how we can create this customized chart in Excel. I can even take the old one and read it off because now I have this new one. Maybe we have just one last issue with this chart. If you want to move this chart around, you can click and then hold and drag. However, you're gonna see that there is a problem. You can move the chart, but you can't move the titles, you can't move the rectangles. But why is that? Because we need to group together this information. But before we do it, let's say you already move the chart and then you have the same issue. You can go to this icon, undo move object, and then click here. Okay, that's it. Now you can undo the action. You can click in the chart or you can click in the rectangle or you can click in the title, doesn't matter. And you can hold down the control key and select all the shapes that you have. The chart, the rectangles, and on and on. But there is a faster way. You can click in any object and Ctrl A, Ctrl A. That way you can select everything. Now we can go to the check format and go to group and group. Okay, that's it. Now all the objects that are separate from each other, now they are part of the same thing. If you click in the chart, click hold and drag, everything is going to move together. And that's it. This is how we can create this customized chart in Excel that is much better than the standard one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have, of course, any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below, and I see you tomorrow. As every day has a new video, I see you there.